الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده على من لا نبي بعده ولا أمة بعد أمته ولا كتاب بعد كتابه ولا شريعة بعد شريعته أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم صدق الله العظيم My dear respected elders and brothers In today's bayan and talk I would like to dedicate this talk on akhlaq that is good character behavior and attributes the sufis have given various definition what constitutes good character and behavior i do not want to go into that particular technical details with regard to what is good character according to the sufis but what like to talk on character the way it is generally understood by people the way it is generally understood by people that is to have good behavior to meet people with a cheerful disposition to give each and every person his rightful due and to speak properly to people that is what is generally understood to be good character and behavior and great stress has been laid in our sharia with regard to this in the quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines the objectives of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ Among those objectives, one objective is وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ That, O Prophet of Almighty Allah, you have been sent to purify people and to sanctify them from evil habits and attributes. Thus, this is amongst the chief aims of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and formed a fundamental part of his magnificent endeavors. And it could not be otherwise for the great importance, good akhlaq and character and behavior plays in the life of a person. A person who has good akhlaq and character and behavior, not only will his life be peaceful and beautiful, but his mere existence will make the life of people around him also one of joy and comfort. But a person who has bad character and bad behavior and attributes and habits, not only will he lead a miserable existence, but his life and his existence will make people around him also to be miserable. This is the readily effect of akhlaq and good character in this world. But it will yield far more positive results in the year after. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying in one hadith, Inna asqala shay'in yurfa'u fi mizan al-mu'min yawm al-qiyamah khuluqun hasan au kama qal. The most heaviest things to be lifted on the scale of a person's good deeds on the day of Qiyamah. What is it? Good character and behavior. Now to you and I, good akhlaq and good behavior does not sometimes even count to be part of deen. People who sometimes perform salat, but you find that the way they speak to people, the way they behave with people, leaves much to be desired. Because they don't regard it as part of deen. Although Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made mention and has said that equal stress has been laid in our sharia for good character and behavior the way it has been laid upon salat and other acts of ibadat. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ لِيُدْرِكَ بِحُسْنِ خُلْقِهِ دَرَجَةَ قَائِمِ اللَّيْلِ وَصَائِمِ النَّحَارِ أو كما قال A mu'min gains through the means of good character and behavior, the status of a person who spends his days in keeping fast and spends his night in performing salat. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has sounded out warnings of punishment for a person who is not good in his behavior and character, which are as severe to as to a person who defaults in ibadat. Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, 
ان ابا غذاكم الي وعب ادكم مني مساويكم اخلاقه can you imagine to us we don't think about this but nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the most detested person in my sight and the one who will be the most furthest for me in the day of kiamat will be that person whose akhlaq and character is rotten and bad it is an akhlaq that a person who is civilized is distinguished from a person who is uncivilized another amazing factor with regard to good character and behavior is that it is only in this sphere of existence that we can emulate the characteristics of allah as we have been commanded to do so by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam said takhallaqu bi akhlaq allah emulate the characteristics of allah bring in yourself the attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now how will you be able to do so you can't do that in ibadat because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not perform ibadat you can't do that in muamalat and dealings because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not deal with human beings so how are you going to adopt the character and the qualities of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only in the sphere of akhlaq and character allah is kind you also be kind allah is compassionate you also be compassionate that is what allama iqbal has also said guftar mein kirdar mein allah ki burhan kahari wa ghaffari wa quddusi wa jabrur jabrut ye char anasir ho to banta hai musliman i won't give you the translation of the entire poem but this guftar mein kirdar mein allah ki burhan that a mu'min in his action and his speech he is a proof of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his whole akhlaq he is a manifestation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is one aspect that only in this way we can emulate the characteristics and bring about the character of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within us then also it is in this particular sphere that it is the most ex- excellent sphere in which you and i can display to other people the beautiful and the beautiful way of islam it is only in character you see to a muslim to a non muslim islam is not what is written in the quran or what is written in the books islam to a non muslim is as good or as bad as how a muslim behaves to him he formulates his opinion about islam by the way the mu'min behaves towards him there was a time when non muslims used to embrace islam by the character and behavior of the muslims but today unfortunately we have to say that today they run far away from islam by the way we behave and how we are we we we, we carry on you see this is so important you see there is said in one particular saying that a person who is a genius he is admired a person who is power has power he is feared and a person who has character he is trusted just as you and i today we make great efforts to have a sound physical health and a sound physical body that is why you find today that the gyms are so full you find that the health products are the, the greatest selling things in the market today why each and every one desires a sound and healthy body and he wants physical strength just as that is our desire and objective it should be the desire and objective of every person that his akhlaq and his character and behavior should be excellent we should desire breath the way we desire a sound and for the physical body and there are various ways of doing this one of the ways of doing it is that we attach ourselves to a qualified sheikh a spiritual mentor who will adorn our good character who will adorn our good behavior and he will rectify and weed out from us the evil attributes like jealousy hatred hatred etc it is one way of doing it another way of doing it is to study the character and the behavior of our beloved nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has paid compliment to the character of our beloved nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam by saying in the quran wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim o prophet of almighty allah you are on a very exalted state of conduct allah ta'ala makes mention and compliments the character of our beloved nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam thus nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best example if you want to have an excellent and beautiful conduct and character and behavior hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala an 
عن حاسيس كان خلقه القرآن سيد نبي كريم صلى الله عليه وسلم أخلاص was the embodiment of the Quran and that is what we should try to do Allama Iqbal once again has said یہ راز کس کو نہیں معلوم کہ مسلمان کاری نظر آتا ہے حقیقت میں ہے قرآن who does not know the secret that a Muslim and a Mu'min ideally he appears to be reading the Quran but in reality he is the Quran he is the embodiment of the Holy Quran ideally that is how a Muslim is supposed to behave among the amazing factors of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's character and his behavior was that he gave each and every person due importance. Aristotle, the famous philosopher, had said that the root cause of all enmity in this world is when a person feels slighted and he feels degraded by another person. That is the root cause of all enmity and hatred in this world. And Nabi Karim Sallallahu one of his amazing factors was that he gave each and every person his due importance. And a person, each and every person has importance. In fact, the mu'min and the believer has greater importance than anyone else. Nabi Karim Sallallahu himself had said, it is more atrocious. It is more bad for the Kaaba to be dismantled brick by brick than a mu'min to feel degraded by another person or for him to be killed by another person. So each and every person has importance. And one of the amazing factors of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in his behavior was, he gave each and every person due importance. As Umar radiallahu ta'ala is going for Umrah, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he comes and greets Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him, Oh Umar, ya ukhaya, oh my small brother, la tansana fi du'aik, don't forget me in your prayers. As Umar said that there is no other statement that gave me greater pleasure than what Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him. Look at how Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him importance. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is once on in the streets and has Hussein radiallahu ta'ala is on the back of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person passes by and said, Oh Hussein, ni'mal markab, you have such a beautiful mount, you have such a beautiful conveyance, you are on the back of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turns the matter and said, Don't say that, ni'mal rakib, don't you see what a beautiful rider I have on my back? Don't you see what a beautiful ride I have on my back? This was the, given each and every person importance. So much so, that each and every Sahabi say, that we felt that we were the closest to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-Az, because of this, one day comes to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh, Prophet of Almighty Allah, Ana khair am Abu Bakr. Am I better or am I closer to you than or is Abu Bakr closer to you? Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of his akhlaq that each and every person felt that he was closest to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But here Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to say the truth because there were other implications. Abu Bakr was supposed to be the first Khalifa. So Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, Abu Bakr is better than you. Then, then he asked about Umar, then he asked about Uthman. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the answer, Umar and Uthman. But to understand what prompted the question, this prompted the question that each and every Sahabi felt that we were the closest to Nabi Akadim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Giving each and every person due. Another amazing aspect of Nabi Akadim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's character was that his kindness and compassion. One Sahabi said that once I came to perform Salat, the first time I performed Salat in congregation. And while in Salat, I, I, I sneezed. And I said, Alhamdulillah, loudly, in Salat. The Sahaba started looking at me with huge eyes. How can you say Alhamdulillah loudly in Salat? He said, after the Salat, the Ani, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called me. Ma darabani, he did not hit me. Wala kahrani, he did not show anger towards me. Wala shatamani, he did not abuse me. But he spoke to me in such a beautiful manner that you are not supposed to say Alhamdulillah loud when you sneeze in Salat. مَا رَعَيْتُ مُعَلِّمًا قَبْلَهُ وَلَا بَعْدَهُ أَحْسَنَ مِنْ I never saw a teacher prior to this or even after this more greater and more beautiful than Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's akhlaq. As Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that once a person came to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me that this person is the most evil person in his tribe and community. But yet, when he came, 
Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke to him in a dignified and the best possible manner. When he went away, Hazrat Aisha said, O oh, Prophet of Almighty Allah, prior to him coming, you told me that this person is the worst person in his tribe. But yet you gave him due dignity, you spoke to him with respect. So Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh, Aisha, the worst of all people in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those whom people do not want to enter into a conversation with them because of fear that that person will insult them. The worst of all people, you don't want to speak to a person. Many times we say, don't get embroiled with this person. Don't get embroiled. Nietzsche or Manas say, he will insult you. The worst of all people in the eyes of Allah are those that you, you fear to get involved with them because you fear that they will insult you. And then Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha say, لم يكن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فاحشة ولا متفاحشة نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم was never indecent in his speech he was never obscene in his language ولا سخابا في الأسواق and he never shouted to people in the bazaars and in the shop places he always spoke to people giving them due respect and honor and dignity can you imagine the beautiful akhlaq of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hazrat Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an says that I stayed 10 years serving Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not once when I did something did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever scold me why did you do that or when I didn't do anything never did he scold me that why didn't you do this and this was not because of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's weakness remember this you know what is meant a mu'min is brave and courageous who tries to alter the environment and conditions around him. Nabi Karim Sallallahu mercy and kindness was not due to weakness, was because of strength. It is only a person who is powerful and has strength, he can show mercy and kindness. A person who is weak and helpless, he can't show mercy and kindness because he is asking for kindness and mercy. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi another aspect, never degraded people publicly and rebuked them. Once a person came and he wore the color yellow, that particular color which was mustard that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has prohibited men from wearing. When he was there, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say anything. After he had got up, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told some of his friends, go and tell him not to wear this color, it is against the Sharia. It is against the Islamic law to wear this particular type of color. Look at the akhlaq of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I will conclude with one more aspect. Hazrat Zaid ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala was among the close companions of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once he had settled down away from Medina, so people came to him and said, tell us something about Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said every aspect of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was amazing. Then he said this, إِذَا ذَكَرْنَا الدُّنْيَا ذَكَرَهَا مَعَنَا That when we were in the gathering and we spoke about the dunya, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke likewise with us. وَإِذَا ذَكَرْنَا الْآخِرَةِ And when we spoke about the Akhirah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke to us about that also. And وَإِذَا ذَكَرْنَا الْتَعَامِ When we spoke about food, that what is good amongst food and what you are supposed to have, what is wholesome, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke to us about that also. This is what you and I today are lacking tremendously. Our behavior, our character leaves much to be desired. Now, never mind inviting people. We have become so rowdy. We have become so obscene. We have become so rude that in our streets we sit and fight with one another. No, no care of how Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam behaved and how was his akhlaq. May Allah taala give us the tawfiq of understanding and making amal. Wa ahlu da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil.